Hi friends, I thought I'd make a video to um, just kind of reflect on this pandemic we're all experiencing and share a few thoughts. I've written them down uh, because sometimes I struggle to be concise and so I'll be reading what I wrote. Um, essentially, there's a lot of important things that we do during this time. Obviously, social distancing and keeping um, six feet from people is very important but also engaging in exercise and prayer, meditation, as well as communion with other people. So eating meals together has been really powerful for me and my family. Um, and then other than that, I think it's also important that we kind of develop a way of perceiving this pandemic that integrates into our worldview. And that can bring us a lot of clarity and peace is when we come to terms with this pandemic. And so um, I'd like to offer my reflections and hopefully that helps you um, integrate this crisis that we're going through into the way that you look at your life and the world at large. Uh, many of you may know that I've worked as a lab technician um, at the VA hospital for a few years and my time there recently ended but over that time, I grew pretty familiar with the biochemical um, underpinnings of everything that this viral pandemic involves. So I know the various techniques involved in testing and potential therapies, as well as how the immune system works on a basic level and then how the virus actually causes harm in the human body. Um, obviously, my understanding is very superficial compared to experts out there. Um, even people I worked with know a lot more than I, I do, but um, it has been interesting to me to follow this novel coronavirus. Uh, you know, in February, when I learned about it happening, I became very interested and very anxious about what could result from it. And so um, that's been a very fascinating journey I've been on, and I've been reflecting on it for some time now. Um, but um, that being said, if anyone has specific questions, I'd be happy to try to explain anything to the best of my ability as far as the technical aspects of the virus, but um, that's not what I want to talk to you about in this video. Um, I'd like to share my reflections on the pandemic by sharing with you my perspective on what medicine is and ultimately what it means to find healing in our lives. So I will be attending PA school this fall in Meridian, which I'm very excited about. But it was also a very difficult decision in, in the course of my life. Um, my father is a cardiologist, so from a young age I was exposed to healthcare. And uh, I have a high respect for people who work at hospitals. Um, but ultimately I was pretty naive as to what they did. Um, in my adolescence I pondered what it would mean to have a meaningful life and what vocation would bring me the most meaning. And so uh, early on, I decided that extending the length of people's lives was a very obvious choice as far as uh, something I could do with my time that would be meaningful. Um, I tend to get pretty bored when I'm doing something I don't see the purpose of. And so jobs that involved selling things or finance never really made sense to me. Although, uh, you know, as I get older, I grow increasingly appreciative of people who are involved in those professions. Um, that being said, it didn't take very long until I realized that that was a pretty naive perspective of medicine. Um, and I started to think, what's the point of extending someone's life, even 10 years, if they haven't connected with a sense of vitality? Um, if they aren't living with an open heart, you know, what's the point of them living any longer? Um, if they're not even awake to their life in the first place, what could medicine ultimately offer them? And so I switched directions pretty dramatically and I began pursuing art and music and meditation and prayer. Um, all these ways that I could think of connecting with that, which was beyond time and space, which was eternal. And... So these various practices, these vehicles, um, they ultimately brought me into these very ecstatic uh, experiences of presence. And I began to see my role potentially as someone who is, who is uh, 
called to invite people to behold a moment of their life as fully as possible, to live in a moment and to kind of reject the future and the past and just really invest uh, yourself in staring life in the eyes. Um, but as I got older, you know, and I had various and I have had various beautiful experiences with religion and art and ceremony, um, there was still this deep tension within me and, and I still hadn't decided what I wanted to do uh, with my life. Um, and so, you know, you might have no, you might notice that there's this tension between science or the objective um, length of, of someone's life, of my life and then art and this subjective depth of someone's experience. And um, it wasn't until the summer of 2018 that those two things kind of collided in one cohesive vision for my life. Um, and that's just where I'm at right now. But on a, on a summer evening in 2018, my family and I uh, went to the Idaho Shakespeare Festival. And I don't know if you've attended, but it's absolutely breathtaking experience. Um, they call it Shakespeare under the stars and you're sitting out on this lawn and you're staring at this this stage when the backdrop is the foothills and it's just amazing. And so we went to see Macbeth, um, which is a very interesting play. Um, and maybe you'll connect the dots uh, <laughs> with this experience. But essentially the, the play started, they were doing a flawless job. Everyone was very invested in this moment until suddenly in the middle of actually one of the romantic scenes in the play, a man at the center of the audience started leaning forward in his lawn chair and the people around him were showing concern. And so out of the corner of my eye, I noticed this and I, I realized, oh, this man's probably having a medical problem. And my dad was sitting next to me and he, he started paying you know really close attention to the man and eventually he put on his shoes and went up the, uh, the aisle and got really close to where the man was sitting. And the play went on, um, but then suddenly the man just collapsed. And uh, so my dad stepped over a few people in his row. And ultimately uh, the, the man had lost his pulse. Um, and so my dad um, gave him CPR and thankfully it only took one compression before he came back to life. Um, but, uh, nonetheless, my whole perspective of art and science, uh, was really transformed that night. Um, and ultimately I came to find that the most dramatic and immersive art installment um, that there is, is the human experience itself. And a central aspect of what makes it that way is actually the fact that we are going to die. Um, there is no such thing as a cure in the absolute sense. There are only uh, ways to relieve symptoms. Uh, we are all going to die. <laughs> and of course, physicians and physician assistants, nurses, people in healthcare play a very unique role in that process. Um, even just offering someone a diagnosis can bring them a lot of peace. Um, but beyond that, uh, medical providers can uh, offer people techniques and medications that allow them to maintain freedom and agency in their life. Um, and so that's really meaningful. However, that freedom uh, is ultimately in service of things like growing flowers in a garden or eating meals with people um, or participating in religious ceremonies. And without those things, um, the uh, medications and techniques that extend our lives don't really have any meaning. So ultimately, my perspective of medicine uh, became uh, this process of coming to term with to terms with the disillusionment of ourselves <laughs> and ultimately uh, that's most fully symbolized by our physical death and so my calling as of right now um, is to help people through this experience of dying and this involves both the realization that we're mortal which happened for me sometime in my 
20s, I guess, early 20s, you know, a few years ago. Um, and then ultimately, um, the other half of my calling is, is to help people through the physical process of dying. And uh, I will soon be learning ways in which we can make that process more comfortable. Um, and uh, obviously, you know, the dying of a respiratory illness is a really dramatic way to go, especially if you're in quarantine. And so part of the reason we're social distancing and doing things like um, exercising and making sure we don't um, kind of increase our risk is to hopefully prolong the time that it would take for us to become infected and then um, have us kind of be able to face the disease more consciously and with more people to give us their attention and, and more uh, resources um, to make that process more comfortable, um, whether or not we end up dying from the disease. Um, and so ultimately, I hope that this story was inspiring to you and you could maybe connect some dots and make sense of it. But um, in following videos, I want to share some techniques that I've found useful in my life in the process of facing my own mortality and um, maybe even a few things that I would suggest uh, that we do to physically prepare for the pandemic and where I think um, our society is headed. Um, recently, my family and I thought that I might actually have a pretty severe form of cancer um, and now, thankfully, the prognosis is a good one. But I'm grateful that I went through that time of uncertainty uh, because it accelerated my personal process of relating to death and then ultimately relating to my life as well. And so I'll probably go into that in a little bit more detail um, and share that experience. Uh, but for now, I wanted to give you maybe just a couple takeaways um, so that you have something to chew on. Um, the first one is welcome to the human experience. <laughs> um, we are not the first generation to go through uh, extreme times. And likely, maybe hopefully, we won't be the last generation to do so. Um, we have inherited a, a lot of things to be grateful for, including modern medicine. Um, but we've also inherited a lot of wisdom as, as far as how we can uh, face tragedy and, and go through um, crisis with composure and um, with a lot of character. And so, um, uh, as strange as this might sound, I have found a deep sense of peace in reflecting on the incredible suffering that humanity has already been through, um, as well as the suffering that humanity is currently going through. And um, for as much as our lives are disrupt disrupted in this moment, um, there are people who have been suffering from far more than this pandemic for many years, even while we have been alive. And so really using this time to empathize with people like who are refugees or who are in the midst of civil wars um, or who are starving. This is an incredible vehicle for us to reflect on the fact that we are not alone. And so Hopefully that would compel us to live a little differently, but also can provide us some peace because we can stand on the fact that we're not the first ones to go through extreme situations and suffering, and we're not definitely not the first ones to go through the process of dying. And so you're not alone, um, and I would encourage you to reflect on um, how many people have gone through things like this who are, uh, and those who are going through it at this moment. Um, you know, I find it, it's a great honor to stand in solidarity with um, those people who are suffering and ultimately it helps me feel less alone. Um, and then finally, the way that you relate to this crisis, I think is very, very important. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's not only important for our society at large, but it's very important for your mental health. And uh, when we serve others and become vulnerable, 
to the ones we love and the greater communities that surround us. We ultimately imagine a world in which everyone is acting in that way. Um, and I've found that the inverse is true as well. When I've become self-centered and tried to separate myself, um, tried to, to convince myself, well, America is going to be just fine, even though other countries are going to get destroyed by this, you know, whatever mechanism I've used to kind of separate myself from other people, um, when I do that, I ultimately project that onto everyone else. And I do not want to be living in a world in which, you know, everyone is just concerned with themselves and not offering um, and being generous in this time. And so the more generous you are, the greater your imagination is going to become for what other people are capable of, of doing and, and what other people are, are doing with their time to volunteer. And... Um, if you do volunteer in some way, however large or small, um, you might realize that you have a lot more optimism because when we start thinking about everyone in the U.S. kind of being generous and, and, and pitching in to overcome this, um, we live in a much healthier and happier world. And so what you do ultimately has existential importance because you're going to think of all of humanity acting in the way you are. And so that would be my challenge. If everyone acted in the way that you are acting, um, how would this thing pan out? So that's, that's a question for reflection. Um, and so with that, I hope that this has helped you relate to the pandemic. And um, I look forward to sharing more. Much love. May you live with the ease of an open heart.